So understand this, data is the new oil. Data is the new raw material. Cheap to mine, it's infinite, it's cheap to distribute, it's exponentially valuable, and it's proprietary in nature. Folks, that literally is the, the holy grail of what you would want for any raw material. The exact opposite of oil, right? The exact opposite. Yes, right. So here's the game, turning data into meaning. Lots of data with no meaningful insights is meaningless. Unprocessed raw material is just what? Raw material. Yeah, yeah. You got to do something with it. So the fourth industrial revolution is about this. The one with the most insights wins, and that means the one with the most data will have the most insights. Now here's the interesting thing. Today, actually, who has the most data right now still in the industry? Yes. Yes, you do. You actually have it. Okay? You have it. That's why you're so awesome at what you do. Okay? And we're going to talk about that. Right? So let me ask you a question. What are these companies? There's data companies. Here's the interesting thing about that. Facebook doesn't invent any data at all. That you do. You, you create all the data for Facebook. You do. Google, by the way, does not create data. You create it. You create it all. Think about that. Amazon is a data insight company, you guys. Microsoft, Apple, insight. App Store, did they write the apps? Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. They created the iPad. They went to Netflix for the content. They are not a content company. These are data insight companies on your data. And you give it willingly. That's the crazy thing. You, 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 I basically turn to my son and say, millennials sold out the world. Because they willingly got onto Instagram or they got into all of these, these social platforms. And, and by the way, willingly give them all the data which they turn around and mine and create insights and sell and then use against you. Yeah, interesting, right? So the five largest companies, 2006, ExxonMobil was the, the, the top there, right? The only data company you see in there is Microsoft. 2017, who's there? Uh-huh, there you go. And Alphabet is actually the holding company of Google. Yes, Right. yeah. Those are the largest companies today, you guys. All data insight companies. And again, right now, if we looked at the real estate industry and you said, what are the most valuable companies today? Zillow would be at the top. Realtor.com would be at the top, right? $8 billion. You might even see Redfin up there at $2 billion something or whatever. And then little bitty companies like ours that make more money than all of them combined. Yeah, 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 clap, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can clap for profit. We're considered worthless. You are considered worthless. Okay. The coming digital data boom will bring the greatest opportunities to those who can collect the most data and turn it into insights. If someone else has your data and knows more than you do, who's really running your business? Yeah. At the beginning of the 19th century when the Luddites were smashing looms, right, because they wanted to break the technology that were ruining their careers, right? At the same time, the U.S. labor force was working the land, 80%, right? Today, less than 2%. Oxford study estimates that nearly 50% of total jobs are at risk during the next decade from the new intelligent machines. By the way, your job, my job, all, every job is at risk. Are realtors going away, yes or no? No. No. Mm -mm. No, now we're, we're at 1.3 million. I remember when we were below 500, okay? I had no problem making a profit then and neither will you. So the number of people that are selling real estate should not bother you in the least. If you intend to be successful and provide value to customers, you will be in business and you will have a phenomenal career. Do not panic over that, okay? Just saying. Hold your applause, John. If you control your data, you'll get to decide how relevant you'll be. Do you hear that statement? If you control your data, I cannot do that for you. These guys can't do it, none of us can. You have to make the decision who you're gonna let have your data. And who you decide to let it have, who we will have it, will determine how relevant you are in the next wave of the real estate industry. 
So let's look at S curves real, stick, real, real quick, okay? So S, cur S curves is how every revolution happens. This is how we go in, right? So at the beginning of the S curve is great. You see this ramp up real fast. That is literally the first innovation. So here it is, it's a new idea. It's a, a smartphone or whatever that is, right? Yeah, so here it is. But by the way, it then stalls out, why? It stalls out for a fair long, fairly long period of time because they have to figure it out. Then you have to write stuff for it. And then you have to figure out how to fix that and make that work. Then we have to get content to blah, 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 blah. All these things have to happen. It's just building momentum before the storm, right? It's the calm before the big storm. So here's an example. Look at these guys. Remember all those names? A lot of players. One emerged. The one with the most data. The one with the most data won. Okay. Now let's look at your industry again. So in this ramp up, Realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia, just to name a few, and then we get Nextdoor, Opendoor, Offerpad, and Knock. By the way, not a one of them make a profit. Not a one of them. They're all publicly owned or venture capital based, and none of them make money. Okay. By the way, your industry is right there. But do you notice someone missing? You're nowhere on this board today. I'm not on the board. And by the way, the reason why is because, and I take full responsibility for this, right? We have, I say you, but I'll say this. We still hadn't fully decided who would get the data, your data. And we're going to decide right now, okay? Because your data is your business. Now, this isn't the first time you've heard me say that. In fact, we wrote a book and that's what it said. Okay, but we were talking about your database. That is one of the pieces, but data is bigger than just database, all right? So the challenge of competing in this new era is what? Is that businesses can longer bolt on the technology. <clears throat> Today, every business must build their business on a virtual platform that is physically enhanced. Do you hear that? Your technology must be your business, right? We have to move off of a physical platform and we have to move digitally, right? So think about it this way. Every day, physical business wakes up and it says, what's the least I can do in the digital world to protect my physical business? The challenge with that is, is that every day a, a, a digital business starting up that has no mooring lines to the present day in any way says, what's the least I have to do in the physical world to kick your butt? It's a losing game. If you look at from Barnes and Noble, you, right? You can look at Blockbuster. You can look at business after business who is physically based and says, well, let's just tack on a little. Here's the interesting thing is Walmart announces, hey, we're now going to build a digital platform to compete and their stock went down. Amazon buys a grocery store and their stock goes up. In fact, they bought Whole Foods and the stock price of Amazon went up so much that it cost them nothing to absorb it. That's the unholy game you're playing right now. You're in that game right now, right? Yeah, yeah. So, here, so here's my point. My point is, is that you no longer have a choice. You have to now mentally and literally physically make the decision that you're going to be digitally based and physically enhanced. Now, the best approach is both. The digital starts out telling you that it's all going to be digital. But let me ask you a question. What business has the most square, uh, sales dollars per square foot? The world's second most valuable tech company does, by the way. Why would Amazon go buy, why do they have a physical bookstore, Jay? Well, after they put the bookstore out of business, they started opening them, right? And they become ways for people to get face-to-face -face with their technology, they get more data on how they shop, and they become distribution centers for them. Yeah. And yeah. you look up in Amazon, um, they have 4% of all retail. And you're like, how can it only be 4%? Because they have like 30% of all online retail. Yes. Online retail is only 15% of retail. Of all, of all retail. So once they conquer this dimension, they just move into physical. Amazon has no choice. What they understand, you're, they're going to grow. Thank you. You're right. Amazon, watch it. It'll all play out. 
Amazon understands now that to fulfill their destiny, they have to be digitally based and physically enhanced. They have to have physical locations. Every great business will have some physical presence. But the path is the digital business will first put the physical out or beat it into submission, and then it will redefine what the physical is under their terms.